I was recently robbed and I don't want that to happen to you. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what happened to me and provide you with a safe living guide, which is five tips on how to improve your safety as a downtown dweller and a condo resident. So getting right into it, right before Christmas, Landon and I were victims of theft. So sometime between 10 p.m. the night before our trip and 5.30 a.m. the morning of our trip, Landon's suitcase and his carry-on bag were stolen. Someone had robbed us and it felt pretty horrible. We had panic, hope, anger, disbelief, all at the same time. How could this have happened to us? Well, before I get into what happened and how to protect yourself, go ahead and click the subscribe button and that little bell so you don't miss out on videos I post weekly. Okay, so to start, let me paint you a picture of where we live. I'm sure it's no secret, but we live in Edmonton's downtown core. Downtown Edmonton doesn't feel unsafe to me. I have lived in downtown or the downtown area since 2007. So until recently, really the only major thing that's happened is maybe the odd person has passed out in our lobby. Nothing major, they weren't scary. They left when we asked them. So my building is a high rise and it seems very locked down in my opinion. The lobby has an exterior door which is locked from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Once you get through that door, there's another door that you need your key fob or you can get buzzed in by a resident. In addition, your key fob only works for your floor and for the parking levels. All entrances have video surveillance, including the underground parking, which you can only access with a fob. I know that some underground parking, they have visitor parking so you can access just by driving up to the door, but ours you can only access if you have a fob and pressing the button. So all in all, the building feels pretty safe. Okay, so the night before we're leaving, on vacation we had an early Christmas with our family and friends that weren't joining us on our trip and Landon being proactive so he didn't have to worry about it in the morning he packed up his suitcase and his carry-on bag and stored it in his truck for the next morning after all we have secure underground parking and we're five levels down so we didn't think it would really be an issue so we get to his truck, it's like 5.30 a.m. and he looks in his truck and he's like, where's my suitcase? I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> where did you put it? He's like, right here. I didn't, I didn't take it anywhere. So that's when we realized we'd been robbed. Everything he packed was gone. His, like all his clothes, his sunglasses, his iPad, he had money in there, his passport. Without his passport, we can't get on a flight out of the country. We tried didn't work so we searched everywhere we couldn't find it and we were especially looking for his passport so we missed our flight I mean it's really sucky but at the end it's a happy story we ended up getting there it was just a day late but it came at a big expense a big expense so how can you avoid this happening to you well maybe sometimes it's not avoidable but if you follow these five tips on how to improve your safety as a downtown dweller and a condo resident, you will greatly reduce the chances of this happening to you. Okay, so number one, I'm sure you've already guessed it, don't leave stuff in your vehicle. Even if you feel it's safe, don't do it. Somebody can get in and then there's nobody around, easy picking. So as we learned the lesson the hard way, even if it feels secure, don't leave stuff in your vehicle. Number two, when leaving your underground parking or entering your underground parking, make sure you stop by the door and wait for it to close. This will greatly reduce the chances of somebody sneaking in under the door. Number three, don't hold the door for people. I know it's polite, so it's super hard and it feels like you're being really rude, but your safety and the people that live in the building, safety is important. We have signs everywhere reminding people don't hold the door for people, especially if you don't know them. Like, of course, like 
if I see my neighbor and I know him, I'm gonna let, I'm not gonna be like, oh no, wait, use your key. <laughs> I'll let him in or her in. But don't let anybody in that you don't know. Number four, don't bust people in that you don't know. If you're not expecting anybody and somebody rings you and you can't recognize them, do not buzz them in. You are risking the safety of everybody in the building, especially the people on your floor. Because in my building, when you buzz people in, it gives them access for five minutes to get to the floor of the person who they buzzed. I remember when we first moved in, somebody tried the, getting into the building through the codes and, and since the buzz codes don't correlate to the floor numbers here, I asked the person what floor uh, they're looking to get to and they're like, uh, floor five? <laughs> yeah, okay, well, we started floor six, so I knew I didn't know this person and I did not let them in. And number five, I think this is the biggest probably risk that we have as downtown dwellers and condo residents is not educating our guests, our friends, our family, our Airbnb tenants on these tips. When people don't live in a building, they're not really used to um, all the rules or what to do to prevent these things from happening. So please inform your guests. It's so important for everybody. So these tips aren't gonna guarantee nothing's gonna happen, but it's greatly going to improve your odds of nothing bad happening. So make sure you follow them. I'm Jen McPhillamy, real estate associate realtor with Yeg Pro Realty. I hope you found this information to be helpful. If so, and you know somebody that needs to hear this information, please like the video and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye.